Studios. This, this is After 9 with Scott and Kat. Happy motherfucking Friday! Why are the short weeks always the longest weeks? <laughs> does it feel long to you? Holy cow, A little cat. bit? Yeah, yeah it certainly yeah, does. Yeah. Hey, before we get too far into it, let's do something fun. Let's talk Wheel of Fortune from last night. This guy had the wrong answer. Tavares. Right in the butt. What? No. No. Blake. This is the best. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> it, I think. Yeah. Much uh-huh. better answer. Uh-huh. It was not right in the butt. It was this is the best. <laughs> He went with what he thought. Mind you, right and the, there was only four letters in the first word and right in the butt. If you're saying it correctly, right. R-I-G-H-T has five letters. R-I-T-E, I, right in the butt. I am so skeptical of everything. I understand that. But I have a feeling this guy did this on purpose. He was he did it on purpose. I, I worry a little bit about Wheel of Fortune. And here's what I mean by that. We know there's big changes coming to Wheel of Fortune soon with Ryan Seacrest stepping in. Yes, I understand their demographic is older people. I'm just going to say older people, okay? You know what I mean. It appeals to the people who like game shows at 7 p.m. right before bed. This is the thing. Do you think that I worry just with this alone making headlines, and I think they wanted it to make headlines? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, okay? But listen, just hear me out. Do you remember the old family feud and what it used to be like before it became the version we know, which is filled with filthy innuendos? Steve Harvey has totally bastardized the family feud. I wonder if there's anything to Ryan Seacrest is about to step in. We need this show to make better ratings than it ever has. The addition of Ryan's great because younger viewers, I think, might have take some interest as opposed to what's there now. Well, he looks younger. He's actually older than me. He, no, for sure, but he still appeals to younger people. There's a lot of young people who follow him, listen sure. to his radio show, watch him on Idol, et cetera, et cetera. I wonder if they're going to start to plant these kinds of things in there. Maybe. Again, that's just me being skeptical and knowing that this is a lot about money. And, and the more viewers you get and the more it goes viral, the more it leads to advertising dollars. And that's really what they give a fuck about at the end of the day. So just I'm going to plant this here on May 24th, 2024. When Wheel of Fortune starts up with Ryan Seekers, if we hear more and more stories of Wheel of Fortune things going going viral, kind of like Family Feud did for a while there, because I think it's kind of died off a bit. People don't really care as much. Then I was right. Yeah. Kat, you are absolutely right. We'll see. Right. We'll see. We'll see. Have, it might not be. You have planted it. I'm planting the seed. Right in the butt. Right in the butt. Seed <laughs> in the butt. Right in the butt. Plant. Or this guy was just doing, this could just be a one-off person that's dumb or just wanted to get attention. That could be true too. <laughs> you know, I sometimes watch this show though, and, and I'm not as good at it as my girlfriend is, but I will often say the wrong answer once or twice while I'm trying to get to the right answer. You just sort of work through it. This guy's just stupid. It's not a crime to be dumb. He just misspelled right and assumed that best was but. Do they not have Maybe any- he <laughs> had it in his head. Do they not have any pre-qualifications to be on that show though? Like a basic... Uh, the, Anything. Do you know that? how to spell the word right? What, what, what is that <laughs> test? I would start there. What is the test that we made the grade, grade sixes do? Yes, the, the, uh, the mandatory reading and writing stuff. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Take yeah, one yeah, of those. Yeah. Hey, I just want to play a few seconds of that one more time. When he says his initial answer, listen to the woman beside yeah. him. Tavares. Right in the butt. What? Don't act so fucking outraged. What? You knew what he said. That was overreacting the, way the, too in much. The, in the what? <laughs> right in the butt. What? Yeah, okay. That's fantastic. How dare you talk about my butt? What? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Things can go in the butt? I didn't know. <laughs> right in the butt. Right in the butt. Right in the butt. Cat, we're getting seven new emojis this year. Yay. The face with the bags under the eyes is the one people seem to be fixated on. They okay. are excited to proclaim in emoji form how tired they are. Better than the yawn? Better than the yawn. Yeah, yes. you think so? It's better than the yawn. It means you're still kind of awake, just living life and trucking through. Yeah, I mean, it's also very realistic. They should almost replace the normal face emoji with the one under ba- with bags under the <laughs> eyes because that's right. how we all look. <laughs> The other ones are the fingerprint. They're, they're going real CSI theme, I, I think, on this. I love it. I'll use it. I'll use it. So you got fingerprint. You've got a shovel. 
Oh, for burying dead bodies. And a splatter mark. For blood. Yeah. Uh, there's also a leafless tree, and I can't think of a connection to murder there. Uh, and uh, That's where you bury the body, under the leafless tree. And there's a root vegetable, like a beet or a turnip or something like you that. You kill them with a turnip right up the butt. <laughs> What are you doing this weekend? Uh, I've got, I'm getting together with some girlfriends tonight, which would be great to catch up. I haven't seen them in a while. Well, are these the ones that you grew up with? No, they were high school. I thought, like to think of some of them. Those ones are my elementary school friends. These are my high school friends. Uh, these your rat or die? My core four high school girlies. The core four? Mind you, they're all, I don't know. I just made that up. We don't really call ourselves anything. You should, and then trade one of them. <laughs> they, <laughs> these, are, these are my friends who, two of them have boys who are in hockey and nonstop n can never get together because they're always on a, in a tournament of some kind, but we managed to find a night, and that's tonight. So we jumped on it. We said, sure, let's do this. Quiet and, night for rep hockey, is it? Yeah, it's, it's, apparently, they're taking a bit of a break this weekend. And uh, I'm doing the walk for Alzheimer's on the weekend. Good for you. Great cause. You know, I've known you for a long time, and I've never seen you participate in one of these. You have done a couple of them, but it's yeah. not very often that you do. You're very selective about the, the ones I, that you'll walk in. You know what? I am selective because I feel like we all have causes, and I think that's okay, by the way. I don't think everyone should be giving to everything, but when there's something near and dear to my heart, I will absolutely take part in it and try to help donate money. And, and so that's what I've done with Alzheimer's because it unfortunately runs in my family and it's a shit disease that I wish would go away. I really wish we'd find a way to get, uh, th with all the great, brilliant minds from around the world that are working on it, it's amazing to me that we aren't a little closer mm -hmm. to a cure. Yeah. I mean, degenerative brain disease is essentially what Alzheimer's is. And to watch people that have it suffer from it yeah. and slowly lose their memories and, and control over basic parts of their body, yeah. it really is sad. So good for you. You raised a lot of money, I saw. I I, I, I did raise a lot of money. I broke a couple of little... Well, I, I was one of the people who broke some records in, in the region. They gave me a hoodie and everything. Really? <laughs> Very nice of them. <laughs> From the Alzheimer's Society, though. That's that's a big deal. Very nice. It's like, it's like an award. Uh, you're golfing today. I am. Actually, you know what I'm going to tell? I'll, I'll let the secret out of the bag here. I'm golfing with Dave. And Dave is still around, guys. He's <laughs> he doesn't he wasn't fired or anything. I think that there were some people who wondered if he worked with us anymore. Yeah. He's still our boss. It, it, very much so. Very much so. And and also a friend as well. And on weekends we take the boss employee hats off and we put on the, the friends hats and mm -hmm. we do social things. Uh so he's not on the pod today because he has some boss shit going on. Boss shit. And then this afternoon we're gonna play golf. First round of the year, cat. It's not going to be pretty. I'm going to be real sore on Monday. Well, you picked a good day for it, though. It's going to be gorgeous today. It is going to be good. We have a lot to get to in this episode of After 9 here, everybody. So let's start running through it. It is Memorial Day weekend, first and foremost, in America. What does that mean for you? Well, if you're flying anywhere, good fucking luck. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> if you're going to be going to America, good luck. Mm -hmm. There are going to be some businesses that are closed or on adjusted hours. Our dollar dropped below 73 cents U.S. again yesterday. Which is great if you earn money in American dollars. Yeah. Shit if you happen to be shopping in American dollars. Yeah. But there's also a couple of huge fireworks displays happening in Niagara Falls. So if you want to go down to the falls this weekend, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night. Huge displays starting at 10 p.m. sharp. Are all the people from the States crossing the border to watch those? Or do you think they'll watch them from their side? I think they better watch it from their own side. We got enough people here. They better. <laughs> Fuck off. You, stay on your own you side. Stay over there, all right? They make our hotels so much more expensive because they book them all up. <laughs> hey, speaking of uh, too many people, StatsCan released some numbers yesterday. And for our amazing listeners in KW, Cambridge, Guelph area, no, it would be just Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo, Waterloo region. There mm -hmm. we go. Which does not include Guelph. The region has formally, uh, no, 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 it's this one. Uh, the region has grown at the fastest rate in history. Oh, great. Last year, the population grew 5.5%. They figure we're at about 675,000 people in Waterloo region now. The next closest was Toronto. It grew at a rate of 4%. Brant and Middlesex counties grew at 3.7%. Oh, that's they, big for there, is that not? A lot, it's a big, a yeah. lot of people. So they say... Waterloo Region is going to surpass 700,000 people this year. And if they keep adding people at the rate they are, Waterloo Region will hit a million population by 2032. That's 19 years sooner than they thought it would happen. A million people. Mm -hmm. 
That's a lot of people. Look, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know, man. If, if you look out the window of the Scott and Cat studio, yeah, they're putting a condo building up right there. Yep. And they're building a lot of condos downtown and, and uptown Waterloo. and They're everywhere. It's great. They're, they're everywhere. Where are the rest of the people going to live? Because as I added up, we got 300 units there, 400 units downtown, 500 here. And there. The, all the, are the large families who don't necessarily want those spots. Good luck to them. The house prices are going to go up for sure. I really worry about what's going to happen with the real estate market Mm -hmm. because on one hand, you now have the Bank of Canada saying they're really worth, sorry, it's not the Bank of Canada. It's the higher ups from them, the ones that investigate banking issues, saying they're very worried about what's coming in the next few months because so many mortgages that were started pre or during the pandemic are coming up for renewal. They're coming up. They're coming up this year. Those fixed rate mortgages that haven't gone up over the last couple of years are about to go from, say, I don't know, 2000 a month to 3500 a month for some people, and they can't afford that. I was just talking to a realtor friend of mine who was saying the amount of homes that they're taking on, and the homes are already empty. Like, the people are already out. They need those homes sold ASAP, and there's not a, there's still not a ton of movement on the bigger homes. It's the, I think that if you're in that bracket of, like, you got a rel- relatively big home, like, I'm talking, like, 1.5 milli or so, it's really hard to sell those right now. Yeah. And they're dropping prices like crazy. And she says more and more people are like, I need out ASAP because my mortgage is coming up. And that's the problem is people are leaving so much money on the table because now they're in a position where they got to sell. Mm-hmm. If you could just hang on for a little bit longer, I really think yeah. that you're going to see that pay off simply because we are so fixated on building the condos that we don't really have a plan to build single family homes. Yeah. We don't. And and the ones that are already we built- don't. People are going to pay top dollar for those. We're still letting a million more people in every single year. And some of those people got some bucks. So if you can, and I know it's tough, but if you can, hang on a little bit longer, swallow it, take that shitty renewal from the bank, and remember it, don't give them any more of your business if you don't have to, and, uh, and make your money down the line. I don't think it's going to be very long. Final preparations are underway in Ancaster right now, Kat, for next week's RBC Canadian Open. Oh, fun. Do people care, do you think? Or is it only golfers that care about the Canadian Open? Mostly golfers. Is it? Like, let's be honest. Yeah, mostly golfers. People go to the parties that surround it, though. Is that the one where they have, like, these parties outside of the Open as well? Yeah. Yeah, like, people care about that stuff and the social aspect of it. But overall, I I don't think so. I think unless unless you're the golfing type, you're like, oh, cool. Whatever. The, the lineup is actually pretty good. Is so it? the tournament actually begins next Thursday. In advance of that, there's a couple practice rounds. There's the Pro Am. I've played in that before. It's amazing. What a great experience if you ever get the opportunity. And then Thursday night is the first concert. Loud Luxury and Frank Walker. Oh, th- oh no way. It's going to be fucking loud if you live it's, in Ancaster. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. But a great show. Loud, I've seen, I mean, you and I have both seen all of them so many times, so many, so many times, we so many festivals, well, yeah. like we know them well, but they, they do put on a really, really great show. Oh, that's good. So the Canadian Open is coming up. And, and like I said, I want to run through a couple of different things that are happening this weekend. Project Erase is now underway, Kat. What's that? That is the annual blitz where all of the police forces work jointly to try and stop street racing. Okay. Yeah, it's the season, right? Yeah. The, the weather's nice. You're busting out those nice cars, and boy, they look good, but you got to like take control of the speed here. Yeah, so what? I, I don't understand why we do this as an annual blitz. Why don't we do this all the time? If police force, I, I get that it's all very territorial. There, there's a set of cops in Halton region, and then there's a different set of cops with a different chief in Hamilton, even though they're right next door to each other. And then there's a different set of cops in Waterloo region with mm-hmm. a different chief. Everybody has their own little thing going on. And then over and above, you've got the OPP and the RCMP. If they're able to work together, why don't they always work together? It seems like a no-brainer to me. Yeah. What they'll do is if, uh, I don't know, the local police force in St. Catharines, that'd be Niagara, finds out, hey, It's got word from one of our people that there's going to be a car meetup and they're going to be doing donuts in the intersection on whatever street in Guelph. Yeah, give the Guelph cops a heads up so they can have some police in place and go and round up all these people that are at these illegal car meets. Why don't we always do that? I I don't know the answer to it. I, I mean... I don't know. Territorial either. shit? Is, is it, it bureaucracy? I would think that a cop can pick up the phone and call any cop. Doesn't have to be a cop that it works with. Any force and just say, hey, hot tip for you. There's going to be a little street race down uh, the Hanlon this weekend, just so you know. Okay, that'd be good to have a heads up. Yeah. 
Uh, while we're talking about provincial issues, later today, Premier Ford is going to come out and announce they're speeding up the implementation of alcohol in corner stores. Now, as we record, he has not spoken yet, but I'm assuming it's going to be a beauty. He's going to be talking about liquor. He's and so the excited. Repor- He's going to be so excited. The reporters that deal with the premier are not necessarily huge fans of the premier, and they constantly go after the guy. So when he goes out there, he's going to be asked about using taxpayer money to pay the beer store. I'm wondering what people would prefer, because I know this is going to be an issue. Taxpayer money going to the beer store. The reason we got to do that is because we have a deal with the beer store where they have the exclusive. That was signed by Kathleen Wynne years ago. It's coming up. It's going to expire in the next few years. But in the meantime, we kind of need the beer store because that's where we return all the empties. So for the people who are going to say we shouldn't be giving tax dollars to the beer store, I don't necessarily disagree with you. But if we don't, there's no recycling program. Would people be okay with that? I don't think they'd be okay with that. I I think people generally are used to and like taking their empties back and getting a few bucks for them. Yeah, and it'd be a bad look for any government that allowed that to happen, right? I think. Nobody wants to be the government that canceled recycling. that's not a good look. (laughs) It really isn't. Well, I'm excited. I think that this is long overdue. Personally, I know not everybody agrees with this, but I think that convenience is king, and I think we should let adults be adults. And if there's absolutely no reason that on my way home from work today, on my way to the golf course, and I'm going to pick up a six-pack for the golf course because I'm not paying golf course rates for beer. Can't blame me. Fuck it. So why do I have to go all the way to a beer store, which isn't necessarily on the way, when there is a Circle K right across the street? I could just walk over there, grab six Stella tall cans, and be on my way. Sure. Why can't I do that? There's some people who are vehemently opposed to this, and I, yeah. I can't understand why. I don't know. I see some benefit in terms of like the people who run these stores too, right? These are f- either franchisee owners or... Or even, are there any mom and pop shop type convenience stores yeah. involved here too? They can apply See, too. And that's and that's huge. That's huge for them. That could bring in a lot of customers that they don't have already. Um, so I, I, I like it from a business point of view. And I think really it is about sheer convenience. I don't think just because there's more available means more people are going to be like, well, I'm going to start alcoholism. Like that sounds fun. I've decided to become an alcoholic. It, it, it's right around the corner from my house now. So I'll, I shall drink it until I pass out every night. I, I don't think that that's going to be the case. I, I really, I really don't. Along the same lines, though, new numbers out of the states yesterday confirmed that now for the first time in history, more people are using cannabis daily than alcohol daily. That's a step forward, I would think, isn't it? I think so. Well, I mean, health-wise, I definitely think so. Yeah. And we have pot stores everywhere. Yeah. So I really don't see how the alcohol is going to become a big problem, but... uh, Prove me wrong, everybody. Go ahead and do something irresponsible. Give me something to talk about in the news on Monday. Go ahead. Let me do it. New survey finds the majority of Canadians are planning to do a more or less staycation this summer because of the high cost of living. The 2024 Summer Travel Outlook, which is published by Deloitte, very reputable company, finds 74% of those surveyed that are traveling this summer are going to stay within Canada close to their home region on a summer road trip. Many are looking at the summer road trip as a means to save money. They also found 35% said they won't be traveling at all because they can't afford it or they'd rather use the money for other purposes. Another travel survey by Kayak found two of the top domestic destinations in Canada this year are Calgary and Edmonton. Oh, I would not have guessed either of those. (laughs) Calgary and Edmonton? No, me either. I would have thought far west, far east coast. That's what I would have thought. Either one. You're either going to Halifax or you're going to Victoria. Right? That's what I would have thought. You're going to Newfoundland, you're going to Vancouver. One of those, you know what I mean? Exactly. Something like that. I don't know. I had a great story in the uh, news today. OLG sends out news releases to local media when someone in the area wins a lottery prize. Yeah. And this was an interesting one because they got second prize. This caught both of our attention and for the exact same reason. Second prize in a Lotto 649 draw. Now, I would have thought second prize is at least a milli. That's what I would have thought. Nope, this one was only $77,000. What they get, like five out of six is or that, something like I was that. just going to ask. I think that's one number off. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine that. You get five out of six lottery numbers. It's not a million, but you're getting $77,000. Yeah. seventy seven k is pretty good. Yeah. But they did it as like a work lottery pool thing. <laughs> I think it is a work thing based on what I'm seeing here. And they got to split it 10 ways. 
There's there's no way some people listening to this podcast don't know these people, by the way. So if you know who we're talking about, because these are people from the KW area, mm-hmm. KW Guelph. I think there's one person from Guelph, one person from Interkip or something like and that. And then the rest are all Kitchener and Waterloo. The rest are Kitchener and Waterloo. So by all means, if you know exactly what we're talking about, just let us know if they work together. We don't need to know where they work or anything like that. We'll keep that all private. But uh, it figures, right? Figures. The odds of your numbers coming up and you actually having a major lottery win are like the odds of getting hit by lightning. The odds of it happening twice are astronomical. These people actually hit it. But it was a smaller prize, Mm -hmm. and they've got to split it 10 ways. By the time they take the lump sum amount, and then they split it 10 different ways, these people, who actually had a winning lottery ticket number, are only going to get about five grand yeah, a piece. Five, maybe six tops after that. Womp, womp. But like, not to say that's not nice. Hey, that's not nice. You got six, five, six grand. Good for you. But of all the times you could have won something. It's got to hurt, Kat. It kind of sucks that you're sharing it with those people. And now you know, like, well, I've already won. The odds of it happening yeah, two you- <laughs> times in a row are slim. You should never buy a lottery ticket again because it's probably a waste of money. Do you stay in the pool? Like, Ooh. let's say, let's say that was us. Okay. So let's say the 10 of us here at the station, we, we won $77,000 shared. And I'm like, okay, guys, pull in your money for next week. You still going to do it? Uh, I like doing that with you because I feel like it would not be complicated at all. If our ticket yeah. won, we could just divide it up very easily, evenly and yeah. very cleanly and say goodbye and never see each other again. <laughs> Shut this chapter. <laughs> Close the chapter. As long as we want enough money. It all depends how much we win. But I don't know if I'd want to do it with the rest. We could let Octavia in. We could let her in. Oh, 100%. Hey, Octavia, would you like to be in our lottery pool if you have to go that get That we don't the actively have yet? <laughs> I'd be in for that. You would do it? Great. Yeah, why not? Could you imagine the big fuck you party we would throw if we won like multi-millions? It would be the biggest what fuck you party. What would we do? Oh, man. Oh, we could talk about this because Dave's not here. What would we say to Dave? No, I'm <laughs> about Dave. I would probably say thank you so much for this opportunity yes. because now I can just afford a house and I'll still yeah. live here. <laughs> <laughs> the way life is going, yeah, we'll probably all still be here. I have this theory when it comes to lottery tickets that you've got to buy them in a small town. Don't buy a lottery yeah. ticket in Toronto. Don't buy a lottery ticket in London. Don't buy it in Ottawa. Because you always hear about the winners that are always from, like, Alora, Haldeman County, places like that. Yeah. I feel like if you go to a smaller town, you've got a better place at winning. But I also know, and you guys can remember this and use this anytime you want, because I look at those stupid press releases from OLG, like, every day they come in. It is remarkable how many winning tickets get sold at little shortstop stores. Little shortstop, yeah. Shortstop. Decent amount of shortstops, yeah. Is there just a lot of them, or do they just sell a weird proportion of, of winning lottery tickets? I think there's a decent amount of them in the area that we get the reports for, the releases for. Uh, there's a, a few more left over here. I don't know how many of them there is in total. I see more and more Circle Ks, but that again, then again, more and more Circle Ks are opening, I notice. Yes, they are. At least are. where I am. Mm-hmm. There's like several Circle Ks that were just built or renovated, revamped, ramped, whatever, revamped to Circle K now. I don't know. And coming soon, you can buy all the liquor you can handle there. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the one that, by the way, I know of one that got built for that reason, like preparing for it. I think I told you about this. They got a fridge room with right now it just has like C plus and fucking A and W root beer and shit like that in there. But he said, we built this knowing this was coming. So I was like, good for you guys. You're prepared. A lot of the smaller places, they have to like renovate, which is kind of, it's kind of sucks. Or you have to move fridge room or figure out what you got to get rid of in order to fit it. I guess we'll have to wait for the premier to talk and explain it. I, yeah. I don't know off the top of my head. You can just grab and go though, right? It's not like you have to sit in the store and drink it. Because I did hear that about no. the 7-Eleven stores for a while. Oh God, I hope not. I don't want to sit. I don't, that, uh, like, honestly, that's the lowest point of my life. If you see me sitting at a fucking 7-Eleven having a drink. Then get me help. Well, have a pizza I'm not, too. I I'm mean. not. No, I'm not. I'm. You'll never catch me doing it. Have some chicken wings. I've got like a nice Seven Eleven not far from me. It's where I get my firewood. Remember? Oh, that's so right. So I've got like a nice. <laughs> she pays like eleven dollars a bag for only kindling. Only when I'm only when I'm desperate. But I've got like a decent. She lives next to a forest. <laughs> Fuck. I'm not allowed to do that. I'm not allowed to take from the forest. I've been to your house. There's trees everywhere. <laughs> You buying fucking firewood at 7-Eleven for it. <laughs> what am I? If I could go out in a plaid jacket and chopping shit down? I'm not doing that. 
Your husband works with wood. <laughs> Fuck. I know. Sometimes we burn good shit, though. We burn, like, cedar and stuff. Oh, that smells amazing. Probably kills him to do it, too. <sighs> There's, like, this thing called zebra wood. It's, like, so exotic, but he had leftover, and it smells amazing. I don't even know what that was made of. I mean, obviously wood, but it was amazing. <laughs> um, and cher- wood and cherry of? wood. We had that once, and it smelled like cherries. Fucking great. And a clean fire, by the way. A clean burn when you have that good wood. Anyway, off topic. But my point is, at the 7-Eleven <laughs> that I go to, I don't want to spend a lot of time there. That's the reason why I would not want to sit there and have a drink. Like, I, I could see smaller towns this making sense. Because there are some smaller towns who are like, this is game changer for a lot of them who don't have an LCBO nearby, who don't have a beer store nearby. They've got to go to the next town to get it. They don't even have a bar in town. They don't town. even have a bar in town. So for them to have the convenience to do it, I could see people being like, hey, you want to meet up at 7-Eleven and have a drink? So in certain circumstances, it makes total sense. For me, I'm getting in and getting out. <laughs> if you see me sitting there and drinking, something is awfully wrong. We're going to talk about Ticketmaster coming up in a few minutes, and I'd Ah. love to walk into a 7-Eleven and see you sitting there having a cocktail. (laughs) That will be the lowest moment of my life. Ooh, that reminds me, though. One more thing on the booze before we move on. On the radio show, we like to mention the days that we're celebrating on any given day because every day is a day that we honor something. This weekend, there's a lot. Today is National Road Trip Day, National Escargot Day, Yay or nay on the escargot? I had it one time, and that was it. You and like I won't it? do it again. I had it in France. Oh, even so I, better. Yeah, well, that's the thing. This was the place to do it, and I still didn't like it. So I figure if I don't like it in France, I won't like it anywhere. Did you chew it, or did you just swallow it? I think I chewed on it. I remember, ah. being, I remember being rubbery. Are you supposed to just swallow it? Escar- Actually, escargot, you can escargot chew it. Escargot's thick. Uh, a lo- yeah, it's chewy. It's not that bad. swallow that whole. You swallow an oyster. I know some people well, chew them, li- but that's, that's different. more liquidy. Than a than a escargot is. Did you get it like Canadianized, like the McDonald's version that they sell in restaurants <laughs> here with the cheese on top no, and the garlic no. butter? And no, everything? this was really pure. Like I said, it was France, so maybe that's why it was a little too much for me. They probably pulled it right off the sidewalk. Oh, I don't. I'm gonna vomit. It's also National Cooler Day. I didn't really pay much attention to coolers until they started selling Yetis and started charging $500 for them. And then I started wondering what kind of technology goes into a cooler. Today's I, a good day to research that. I was into coolers. And then I got a job. That's a funny joke. Like, ha, ha, ha. ha! Losers. I had them in high school, is my point. Cooler. Who wants coolers? Who wants coolers? Oh. They're so full of sugar. I think it meant cooler is in the, the box that keeps your, your ice frozen oh. and your drinks cold. That's the way I read National Cooler Day. But it might be oh. the alcohol. I have no oh. idea. Oh, I thought you meant coolers, like Vex and shit. Ah. Like, get that out of my face. No, thank you. Okay, in fairness, though, we've made some good progress. Because for a long time there, we had... Fucking Vex and Smirnoff Ice and all these. Mike's hard. Mike's Woody's. Hard. Yeah, it's terrible shit. Rev. But now <laughs> the pre mix department has become a lot more versatile yeah. and diverse. And there's a lot of good stuff that comes pre mixed now. Now you've got like the seltzers and stuff, which still have the flavor but have way less sugar. I think that's what gets people though. It gives you headaches. It's not good. The pre mixed uh, Aperol Spritz is really good. I had is one it? last weekend. Really? And I didn't want it. Is Somebody it? said, just try it. And they were right. It was good. In a can? It you can, I can. Okay. Uh, it's a small bottle. Okay. Tomorrow is Greek Pride Day, and tomorrow ah. is National Wine Day. Mm-hmm. What are you drinking these days? Anything in particular? I haven't had wine in a couple of weeks. I'm off the booze right now for a while, but uh, uh, my my go to. Did you get caught again? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just like a, just like a. I don't, I don't need it. <laughs> no, I just don't need it. I, I do it usually. It's usually it's like a weekend thing, but I, I'm going without it for a bit. But I Sauvignon Blanc for me is my go-to wine. Mm-hmm. I like a nice, crisp, low sugar. I always pay attention to that because it does make a difference, I find. Okay. Yep. Low what, sugar Sauvignon Blanc, I say, if I had to pick one thing. Or maybe a Pinot Grigio. What's going down on uh, girls' night tonight? You getting uh, into the hard stuff or are you going with wine? I'm not having anything. Nothing? I told you. Even no, on friend night? No, I'm on like a metabolic meal thing. I can't drink for like 30 days. So, Yeah. <laughs> It is also So I'm gonna be the boring person that goes to the girls' night and doesn't drink. I'm the DD though. I'm DD. the DD tonight. At a girl. Yeah. Good stuff. I'm driving two of my friends. Uh and Sunday is National Blueberry Cheesecake Day. Oh, blueberry. Okay, blueberry is the only fruit in that should be in dessert. <laughs> okay, I feel like a hot take is coming. Th- that's it for me. Like that's it. Blueberries are amazing. I don't want anything else in my dessert fruit based. I- isn't any berry good in dessert? Like strawberries are good in a dessert. Um, it depends on the dessert. Like, what about like a raspberry? 
A raspberry? A like, raspberry. are we just talking cheesecakes here? We can talk cheesecake if you'd like. No, like blueberry's the best. I don't. I don't like fruity. De- I don't tend to like fruity desserts. I'm just like a chocolate or nothing person. You've had Layla's, right? No. Really? What the heck is that? Okay, I'm gonna do a free mention here for a uh, cheesecake place. It started off. I got the story because I was in there one day and I was just. I'm in love with this cheesecake. They sell it in Burlington at a place called Layla's Cheesecake. Layla's got a good story because when she was pregnant, she was craving cheesecake and she invented a really great recipe. So great that she started selling it out of her home and people couldn't get enough of it. I know exactly why because it's amazing. It's got crack in it. So she opened up a shop and the shop is one of those ones where if you don't get there by noon some days, you're not going to get cheesecake that night. They can come in uh, bar form where they make a big square one and cut it up into squares. It comes in individual jars if you want a jar of cheesecake. It's great the way they do it. Now they're selling it in like Holt Renfrew and stuff as a real fancy add-on. Is it cheap? Absolutely not. You're going to pay like $12, $13 for a small cheesecake. Oh, my gosh. But God, is it ever good. It's good. Layla's in Burlington. Oh, yeah. I know some people are like hardcore cheesecake people, so that's great. Uh, I'm going to play something for you. Don't guess yet. But I'm going to ask you to try and identify who this singer is. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations, Vanessa. Yeah, thank uh, you. Okay. It was- <laughs> That's the wrong clip. <laughs> you know, Cole from... That it did. You know... All right, well, fuck it. Vanessa Hudgens. <laughs> that was the best. One- we are not editing this out. No, no. I did know, though. In all fairness, I did know. I, I didn't... You know what? I lost track of the mass Singer this season a little bit, but I did watch her perform as... What was she, The Clock? Yeah. She the clock. So I did watch her perform as the clock. And one of the guesses early on was Vanessa Hutchins. And I heard it. And I'm not even like, I didn't watch like High School Musical and all that stuff. But I was familiar enough with her voice to go, that's got to be it. So it did not surprise me that she was the clock in The Masked Singer. I feel like at this point, now I've got to play a little bit of her actually Let's singing. Let's play her singing. I butchered that segue <laughs> so badly. Here is a little bit of Vanessa Hudgens. I hate to give the satisfaction asking how you're doing now. How's the castle built of people you pretend to care about? Just what you wanted. Wow, what an amazing voice. Look at you, cool guy, you've got it. I see the parties and the dime, and sometimes when I close my eyes, six months of torture you sold to something. I mean, I don't know how they didn't know that. To me, that just screams I Vanessa know. Hudgens. Once you hear it, right? I laugh at the stupidity, because I made some real big. All right, hang on. Now I'm a little curious to hear how this goes. I want to see if she can hit it like Olivia Rodrigo does. That's about what I expected. Good, fine. Yeah. Hey, when you're little Olivia Rodrigo there, and you've put out a huge song like that, chances are, if you're Olivia Rodrigo's age, you probably grew up watching a high school musical. What's it like to see someone that you grew up watching, like Vanessa Hudgens, singing your song on a show like that? You know the connection, right? No, what is the connection? Olivia Rodrigo was on the new high school musical. Oh, was she? Yes. Oh, well, then With makes Sabrina sense. Carpenter, who's now a star as well in her own right. Uh, y- so those two starred in the new high school musical. Am I wrong here, Octavia? Can you, Gen Z, <laughs> Gen Z, I'm correct on this, right? I'm pretty certain I am. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's the connection there too, is Vanessa Hudgens was in the OG and she was on, I don't know if it was a series or if they redid the movies, what was it? Because I didn't watch them. But Olivia Rodrigo was in it. Hmm. Well, uh, not a bad performance. I'll still take Olivia's performance any day. But uh, yeah, that sounded good for Vanessa Hudgens. The Masked Singer is an underrated show. We talk sometimes about like mindless shows that you can put on from time to time. If you want a singing one, watch that. Because American Idol and The Voice and all these other ones are so up and down, hot Which is and too cold. Bad. Yeah, it's not great. It was the series, by the way. High School Musical Series, Olivia Rodrigo started. There you go. What are we going to do with Ticketmaster, Kat? I don't know. I'm curious to see how this goes. But we, we knew it was probably coming. And sure enough, this is going to be an interesting lawsuit to watch. Or the, a lawsuit? Or is it more of a, we're forcing you to do this? Yeah, they're going to try and force the company to be broken up. They've tried antitrust suits like this in the past. And sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. This is a weird one, though. Because the same people who are now going after Ticketmaster and Live Nation 
are the exact same people who approved the yeah. merger between Ticketmaster and Live Nation. Now they claim that promises that were made during that initial merger, though, are not coming to fruition. They're saying that they did this. But listen, everybody's on the governments to try to do something about ticket pricing, right? So this is their way of doing it. I, I get that. But I guess that there was a promise made, like, we will not inflate prices. We will, just because we have this huge monopoly on it, you know, we, we won't be doing that. Now they're saying, Ticketmaster fire back real quick, because everyone knew that this lawsuit was dropping. So together they put out a statement saying that it is not their fault that prices are as high as they are. A, it's the people who are buying pre-sale, or sorry, uh, like scalpers tickets. Uh-huh. You're the reason why it goes high. Blaming other people, which is kind of like, I don't know if that was a good idea to do. Second is artists are spending way too much money on production costs for these concerts because the ticket prices are so high, they have to find a reason why. Could we just ask for something? A little bit of transparency? Well, that's one thing. But number two, I'm okay with lowering ticket costs if that means production's lower. I just want to see the singer out on stage doing their shit. I don't need them to be strapped by a fucking thing swinging through the air at the Rogers Center. Mm. I don't need to see it. It's not necessary. In some cases, maybe it is. A pink for is a great example of why hers is a little bit of a two for one. You get her flipping around and maybe that's what people come to see too. But if you're not into, if you're not doing that anyway, I don't need the pyro. Take it away. If you're a good enough artist, you don't need any of that shit. My personal opinion. Yeah, I uh, I don't know how much more production costs could have possibly gone up in in since COVID. Really, it is when they started to get completely out of control. Although this has been going on for about six or seven years now, and it probably also has to do with like them not being able to get it. You we always had these supply chain issues, yeah. so it could have been that the cost to br- bring them was more expensive. I mean, who knows what happens behind the scenes? And I trust that it does cost a lot of money to put these things on. But is anybody else with me? Like, I'd rather see less to spend less. What is the average ticket price now? Would you say average is two hundred bucks? For- sure, sure. Let's go average. Yeah, because like even the like the middle of the road kind of people in the middle of the road seats you could probably get for a good hundo, middle of the road. I mean, so for two hundred dollars a seat average 18,000 seats in one of these arenas. That's just the arena shows. Forget the stadium ones. $3,600,000. Now, I imagine the venue has to get paid out of that Mm -hmm. unless they're just living off of what they make at the concession stands, which would probably be sufficient anyway. Venue, tons of employees. Employees, artists, and stuff like that. I, uh, I have to think that if we really want to solve the problem, the best way to do it is to go back to the way we used to do it. Before they approved this merger and we created this monster company that has 70% of the market under their direct control, go back to selling them from the venue. Hey, if you're Olivia Rodrigo and and you want to do a concert at Scotiabank Arena, no, you don't go through this big touring company anymore. You do a deal with Scotiabank Arena. And Scotiabank Arena's box office is going to sell tickets to the show at Scotiabank Arena. It would help out a lot if it didn't all have to go through this one big machine. And I'd love to think that they probably have the best of intentions, but it doesn't seem like that's resonating when prices just continue to climb. I feel bad for people because I'm spoiled. I've been doing this for a long time, and I have seen everybody you can imagine. I've been to every concert. I've seen it all, done it all, and I have no interest in going to concerts. If somebody phoned and said, hey, I got an extra ticket for Taylor Swift, I'd be like, fuck no, I do not want to go to that. I find that we we get an interesting point of view from where we are for that reason too. Not just the fact that we've been lucky, but don't you notice right now on our radio show, we give away a lot of tickets and they're uh-huh. the hottest tickets. Like we've got Taylor Swift still to come. We already gave away some Taylor Swift. That one's a hot, like one of the hottest ones, but there's so many tickets this summer. No, I have never seen so many people and, and heard of so many people wanting to win concert tickets, Mm -hmm. trying desperately, texting us at all hours on our hotline, wondering when the next concert tickets are, how they can get it. They don't even care who it is because the cost of living is so bad. The cost of prices of the prices points of these tickets are so high. They will go see anything for free because it's so expensive. So I get it. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard right now. That's my point. I mean, I, I'm spoiled because I've seen it all and I have no interest in going, but I am really aware that there's parents out there who do they not want to have it. to tell their kid, yeah. sorry, you're not going to see I Taylor get, Swift. I wish we could help everybody. I really do because I know there's a lot of people out there, especially in that case where it's like you want to make your kid happy, your kid likes whatever artist it is, and you want to give them tickets, but you don't want to, you can't, you can't afford, that's a, 
That's a $600 to $800 night, depending on where you're going. Well, I would like to see a little bit of transparency. I mean, I just did some rough math based on an average $200 a ticket. I have a feeling it's much more than that because we know some people are paying seven, eight hundred bucks a ticket, and and the cheap ones I feel like are the two hundred dollar tickets. So they're probably making five, six, seven million dollars at the box office from each one of these shows. Just show us how much is production. What does the artist get paid? The difference goes to you, I would assume. So. How yeah. much is, is there? Yeah. I mean, if you could sell tickets for $200 for the expensive ones, which is roughly what it used to be, everything was fine. Who decided they wanted to be more rich? Was it the artists? Was it the people who sell staging and lighting? Or was yeah. it Ticketmaster and Live Nation? I don't know, but it would help me make an informed decision on how I feel about this if I knew who was the one who raised the prices that high. It can't be all scalpers. And by the way, it's 2024. You guys still haven't figured out a way to stop those scalpers from stealing up all the tickets? Come on. Yeah. Th- there has to I be know. a way. They've done they've done some things, but does it actually work? How could we know if there's, like you said, again, no transparency there? Got to roll, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. I am going to endeavor to get that solo Scott done, but realistically, it's probably going to be early next week as opposed to this weekend because... Well, I'd like to have a it's weekend. It's the weekend. What are you doing? Yeah. Don't do that. I'm golfing today, and I don't know if I'm going to be in any shape <laughs> to do anything after that. Yeah, relax. Enjoy it. We will uh, catch you right back here on Monday with another After 9. In the meantime, feel free to hit the archives. There's lots of them there. Have a great weekend, friends. The Mount Everest record just got broken again because Sherpa guide Kami Rita is up to 30 ascents now. Even more impressive than the number of ascents is that he hit this record as a 54-year-old. <laughs> Damn, summoning Everest for the 30th time at 54. I need a nap after I summit the staircase to the Jamba Juice. Well, some big financial news this week. The stock market hit another all-time high. Uh, For instance, uh, Elmer's stock is up because Boeing is using their glue to repair their plane. In new reality show news, Hulu's Virgin Island will be a dating show for celebrants. Virgin Island, also the theme of the pizza party I threw myself instead of going to my prom. 